Welcome. In front of me is the Apple Reno 4 Lite, and today I will go over unboxing along with an overview of the device. So, this is the package that it comes in, obviously. Let's pop it out of it. So, nothing in here apart from some basic information. Drop that to the side. Pop this open. Again, nothing in here, just a cardboard box. Then, in here, we get the phone itself. So, let's get that. I'm gonna set it up to the side for now. The device is already set up, so I don't have to do, go through that. And then, here we got the paperwork. Oh, some more paperwork and the SIM eject tool on the other side. So, nothing special. No one really cares about the paperwork. Then, we got the charger and cables that literally smell like China. Um, so, yeah. Uh, not a very feasible smell from the accessories. The plastic smell is just disgusting here. Uh, and we got a charger. Uh, it looks like a fairly hefty charger, but in all honesty, just an 18 watt charger. It's nothing special. Maybe you can see it right here if I can get it in the light. Uh, but it's right about here. Right above the Made in China marking. So yeah, it's an 18 watt charger. A little bit oversized for its capability in my opinion. So I'm not really sure why that why they went with such a um, girthy brick here. There we got the headphones. Uh, they really resemble in the shape uh, the traditional like uh, wired Apple buds. Um, the old buds I mean. And then we get the type C cable, I hope. Let's see. Yep, type C to type A. So just a typical cable right here. Then we can go to the phone itself. Um, got a bunch of information here. So, cool, it's 6.43 Super AMOLED display, uh, 18 watt fast charger, 6 AI portrait cameras. Oh, they mean 6 in total, okay. Um, and uh, super slick body. Cool, no one cares. Um, so, popping it out of the out of that foil, we get the display. Uh, now, I do have to say right off the bat, not sure if this is uh, that visible on the recording or if it really shows off the scale, but the two front-facing cameras are, the cutout for them is just super small. Um, and I'm not sure if this is going to be visible on the camera uh, as it is for, for me in reality. Sometimes those things aren't really, the scale of them isn't necessarily uh, reproduced very well, but this thing is well tiny as you can see this is my finger next to it and this is just a tiny little blip here so that is really nice now what isn't tiny is probably that chin at the bottom uh, it is quite hefty considering the rest of the the front of the device looks fairly uh, slick and modern just the bottom of it uh, seems a little bit dated and uh, like we already mentioned uh, this is the super AMOLED display um, and it has a resolution of 1080 by 2400 with 84.6% screen to body ratio and 409 pixels per inch. Just a typical 2019 kind of specs uh, on the device, I would say. Uh, and Gorilla Glass 3. So this is basically the front along with one more thing, which is the uh, two sensors that are right here in that cutout. So the main one is a 16 megapixel wide sensor and then we got a 2 megapixel depth. Now I'll mention this right off the bat. Um, there is, it looks like there's a bunch of useless sensors here. Um, selfie cameras, I don't think they need a depth sensor, especially at 2 megapixels, they are just useless. Um, and as well on the back. Now also, I can't really find info right here and for that I pulled was from GSM, uh, GSM Arena about the phone itself uh, but apparently uh, based on their specs um, it has two depth sensors at the back both at 2 megapixel and honestly um, I wouldn't be surprised if that is true although it would be kind of weird but the main, the main sensor shooter at the back is a 48 megapixel wide sensor 
and then we have the 8 megapixel ultrawide and apparently 2 megapixel depth sensors and uh, Apart from that, it shoots at uh, 4K 30 frames and 1080p uh, again 30 frames along with a slow motion of 120, so that is really nice. Now also one thing that I will add right here, uh, the mm, camera bump has a bump in itself. So we heard that you like bumps, so we put a bump on your bump here. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if this is going to be visible, but the lenses itself protrude and the housing for all the four uh, sensors also protrudes so it's just kind of like doubled and i'm not really a fan of it i would prefer to i don't know even it out with the cameras itself uh, this way it wouldn't be so wonky uh, but that is what it is now also not sure if this is very visible here but the phone has like this uh, weird gradient so it has like a stripe right here can see the reflection uh, now on the camera it kind of looks weird uh, like there's some kind of sticker on it I would say but uh, this is just like two different gradients uh, on the back and it's kind of like divided in that way so honestly it looks kind of nice I'm not gonna lie so moving on to the um, further specs of the device um, it comes with a Helios P95 um, also has a 128 uh, gigabytes built-in storage along with 8 gigabytes RAM with a UFS 2.1 so that's the storage uh, and this is a little bit slower than what you would have on an uh, SSD and uh, some other premium devices uh, or majority of the premium devices nowadays uh, come with a UFS uh, 3.0 or 3.1 which are basically like SSD uh, storage uh, type speeds so when it comes down to read and write you would be getting way better speeds with a 3.0 or 3.1 um, this is a little bit slower and not as good but still it's okay now the device also has a uh, SD expansion slot so we can expand it via SD and comes with a 4000 and 15 milliamp hours battery and uh, the 18 watt charger that I actually mentioned well, previously so yeah now apart from that the device well, seems to run fairly well uh, smoothly uh, even though the uh, p95 I don't think it's the best processor out there or well, anything like the fastest so even though well, the p95 isn't necessarily the greatest it's still in my opinion runs fairly well and uh, I also did check right now uh, it does have the two uh, two megapixel depth sensors not really sure why that is the case um, but basically um, I mean I kind of know what, why the why it has so many depth sensors um, it looks better on, on the paper people don't usually I would say check the like what the lenses are so if you're looking at this device and thinking hey, hey it's cool because it has uh, lots of lenses um, in reality you only get three you get one in the front and two at the back the rest is just useless garbage now we can also uh, look at this probably right here uh, maybe they do some kind of weird trickery uh, using the two depth sensors to get some better uh, better photos, but I assume it's not going to be anything good now in here We got some uh, pro mode uh, slow-mo stickers. I'm not really sure what that is. Let's see We have to like flip it over Seems to do nothing um, Whatever uh, okay, let's move on to see what else is here. So we have the panorama, time lapse, text scanning, and that's about it. Portrait, photos, videos, and night. Uh, there is no macro lens, um, and honestly, I don't really have any way of testing the depth sensors here. Uh, I assume it's probably going to come out just as bad uh, if you cover it or if you don't cover it. I don't think there will be much of a difference, but 
go into photo I guess and I believe those are the you know, two bottom ones so I'm gonna capture one photo with with them being uncovered let me just clean it out so there is no discrepancies of like how the lens is okay there is one and now I'm gonna try to hold it at the same place but and I cover the two lenses that are the depth sensors. If my hand wouldn't be shaking, that would be super nice. So let's see. This is the covered one, uh, where apparently the depth sensors are covered. Um, looks fairly detailed. Um, the blur. It actually looks okay-ish. Um, this is the covered one. Keep that in mind, and it looks okay. There's no. It did capture what I wanted, which is basically the plant itself in a full detail, as you can clearly see right here. So the plant is in fairly decent quality, and the uh, blur isn't anything obnoxious or anything like that. So now let's go to the previous one, which is with the uncovered depth sensors, and also look at that. And. Uh, quickly check something I can still zoom now the plant looks a little bit more blurry here but I believe that was because my hand was a little bit shaky and uh, let's see although it's fairly close I would say it's also super blurry on the leaves on the front here um, let's see the background blur it's Seems a little bit worse, honestly. And here, I don't know if you can see it. Specifically right here, it looks like it has kind of, of a weird halo around between the, uh, the, the pot itself, the white one, and the background of the monitor. It looks really weird, also, almost like the edges of it are kind of glowing. They're basically feathered, I would say. Something that I didn't really see here. No, it's still here anyway. So, nothing really changed here. Yep, the quality is about the same. Uh, so, if the depth sensor is supposed to do something, they most certainly didn't do anything useful here. Uh, the shots look basically identical. The the blurriness of of like the the plant itself around the edges right here was well equal so like i said the the two uh, depth sensors that are on here are basically useless and in reality you're getting only uh, three sensors instead of the five or six whatever here no six so um that's basically that and it's just a weird marketing scheme that companies decided to pick up in 2020 to just add more sensors uh we need to catch up with the with the competition so let's just drop depth sensors and macro sensors now i'm surprised they did, did go with two depth sensors because usually companies decide to actually keep it a little bit different and add uh, at least one one of each but in here just a blatant lack of i don't know uh, willingness to even try to do anything uh, the, the two depth sensors like you don't need two if you do need two you're doing something wrong i would say and uh, yeah, apart from uh, the cameras that I have a, a fairly big problem with, uh, at least the marketing scheme that they, they're trying to do here, um, the photos were coming out fairly sharp as you've seen on the plant itself, so no problem there. But then we were capturing the photos with a 48 megapixel sensor, so hopefully that would be capturing good photos. Um, and apart from that, you've seen the, um, the responsiveness of the device, it works fairly snappily. Uh, there's no like lags or anything. It runs smooth. So no problem here. Uh, I would probably like to see a little bit of a better charger here uh, Not the 18 watt that it's provided here. Uh, this is the 2020 not 2017 and uh, Also if you're including a brick for your device, you can make it about a quarter of a size at 18 watts I would, I would assume or hope um, There is well, companies for instance like Samsung that, that add 25 watt chargers and 
still managed to make them basically half this size so um, this is again just a laziness on their part because their 30 watt chargers are at the same size so I assume this is the reason why they went with it because they already had the design for it and probably a casing for it laying around so again this is um, just a cost cutting for no reason apparently now this is all speculation so keep that in mind um, but if you look at it from perspective outside perspective it's an 18 watt charger uh, in the same casing that the 30 watt chargers come in or even 40 I don't know if I know they make some fairly decent chargers as well they have the VOOC 4.0 which does charge really quickly but this is not it and apart from that um, the device looks really nice modern uh, slick uh, the price of it I would say might be a little bit uh, either really close or a little bit overpriced in my opinion at 370 euros um, you are paying for the uh, three uh, useless sensors, in my opinion, which you won't be able to get any anything out of. Um, but honestly, the device itself works fairly well enough. It has uh, most likely some bloatware, as we see right here, Oppo Relax, and a couple additional stuff that you might not care, but let's see if we can remove this. So, looks like we can, or probably just from a home screen. Nope, it looks like we can remove the bloatware even from Oppo. So, that is nice. Um, and as you all obviously see, it comes with their own skin on it. Uh, and this is on Android 10. So, uh, this is basically, at the moment, the latest Android. Uh, at least for this device. Uh, some devices like Google Pixels and stuff like that did get update or beta updates to Android 11. Uh, um, I'm not certain or there is no info about uh, this device going to Android 11, but it most likely will once the update uh, drops for basically everybody else. So that's also nice. I'm personally not a fan of this skin on it. It looks a little bit, um, a little bit childish. Just something about it doesn't doesn't fit for me. But that's just personal uh, taste, and if you like it, then that's okay. Uh, this is just an appearance wise um, of the device and it changes nothing in terms of the usability so if you like it that's fine if you don't uh, then I guess probably purchasing a device like that will be a little bit um, harder for you and yeah, there's not much more to say about it uh, I basically went over all the specs of it and the downsides and at the end of the day the device runs fine uh, a little bit it is going for the mid-range pricing right here and I don't think it's necessarily worth that price uh, I believe there is probably different devices that will also from Oppo uh, that I've uh, checked out not too long ago with basically similar pricing maybe a little bit more expensive but about like 20-30 uh, euros more uh, which would bring you a little bit more out of it uh, this in terms of usability and what it brings in so I'm not exactly sure if this is the, uh, the best device. I, I would strongly advise you to, for instance, look at other options. Um, and only if you see this as a, the, the best one, um, then go for this one. Because I strongly believe there's probably better phones out there uh, than this. So yeah, that was basically the overview of the device. So if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.